Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Real True Street Crime. I want to just tell y'all another lighthearted story, you understand? I was a little boy. My grandfather used to always take me to Prophet's Barbershop. His name was Prophet. Prophet's Barbershop. And the only thing Prophet could do was cut a ball head. And that's, that was my grandfather's barber, Prophet. And he'd get up there, yo, you ball headed for goddamn show. First time I ever went to Prophet, he cut me, I was ball headed. Damn, this motherfucker didn't cut me ball. I didn't want to be ball. But you know, you wearing them couple bucks and them BB shots at that time. So Prophet gone cut that shit off. So now I done got a little older, we still going to Prophets. It's around Christmas time. True story. Prophets Barbershop. It's around Christmas time. And he had a, nut, a young new barber in there cutting out by the name of Little Willie. This is where the barber Little Willie started at Prophets Barbershop. This is where Little Willie, if you all know Little Willie, this is the barbershop he started at the first time I ever met him was at Prophet's Barbershop. He was a young man, and he was cutting heads. And he is the man who everybody wanted their head cut by. Little Willie. You had to get a haircut by Little Willie. But understand, y'all know, the top barber, God damn it, you're going to be waiting a long time to get a cut by Little Willie. Because he got motherfuckers waiting on. He got the shop lined up. I mean, every goddamn body in the barber shop is waiting on Lil' Willie. When you know it's a, who are waiting on Lil' Willie? Every goddamn hand in the shop went up. Everybody waiting on Lil' Willie. And Prophet is the owner now. And I told you, only goddamn thing Prophet can cut is a goddamn ball head. So, basically, only old fellas coming in there getting a the ball head. So, everybody in there is waiting on a fro or some kind of cut, which Lil' Willie has got the whole motherfucking barber shop rocking. One barber, everybody is waiting on him, and that's who I want to cut my goddamn head. So my grandfather said, now, we about eight down for you to get your hair cut by Lil' Willie. Now, if we go ahead on and get Prophet to cut you up and clean you up, we can go on up here and get some breakfast and have them waffles and them pants, them waffles and them sausages them homemade sausage and shit you like up here on the bullet by. Now y'all know I'm a little fat, greedy ass boy and at that moment my goddamn stomach was growling. Boy, that motherfucker said them waffles and homemade sausage. Cut me, Prophet. Go ahead on, shit me down. <laughs> so Prophet with that on, cut me down. Move on to the next time we're there. This is about New Year's now. This might have been a little before Christmas. My next cut is going to be before New Year's. So we did before New Year's. And you know, in Michigan, it snows and all this shit. So it's the snow, the ice. I mean, it's snow everywhere, ice everywhere you walk. He'll bust your ass coming in there. So Prophet out there putting some salt down because it's snow and ice every goddamn way. Now, Prophet was the owner of the shop. And Prophet used to keep a little 38 on his side all the time. Prophet kept that little 38 on him. Now, he out there in motherfucking snow, shoveling the snow and ice and shit. And so happened, he's over here off the boulevard where Henry Ford Hospital is at. He's on the other side, though. That's where his barbershop was. Now, he out there in snow, ice. He's put, cleaning up the snow, trying to put salt and shit down. He's cleaning up the snow. But still, now, he's just an open, all this goddamn snow and ice, man, every goddamn way. So Prophet tell my grandfather, wait a minute, I I got to clean up, you know, I got to make it where the customers can come in. So Prophet is out here clean, trying to clean up the snow and the ice. I mean, it's cold and icy. And these two young guys come walking from behind Prophet. And Prophet turn around, and these young guys is trying to rob Prophet. So Prophet goes trying to get his gun and before Prophet can go get his gun, the goddamn snow and ice then caught him. Prophet go up 
and hit the goddamn snow and ice and come like a cartoon character. This motherfucker slipped trying to, and he, I mean, he slipped in. Wham! Them two young niggas grabbed Prophet's motherfucking wallet, took off with Prophet's goddamn wallet with all the goddamn money in it. And Prophet got his gun on his side now. They didn't took his goddamn wallet because when he fall on the, the ice today, they killed his old ass. Prophet just slipped and wham! And when he slipped and wham, the motherfuckers went right in his back pocket, grabbed his goddamn wallet, took off running. He hollering like a motherfucker. Stop, goddammit, stop! He said he hollering, stop all this. Prophet get up, never had a chance to do Never had a chance to even draw his gun. These niggas got... Prophet down on that ice, slipped his ass down on that ice, reached in there and grabbed this goddamn wallet with all it because Prophet kept a knot. You know, a barber keep a goddamn knot. Prophet used to keep a knot. Boy, them motherfuckers had Prophet Holly, boy. Prophet was so goddamn hot. Now imagine Prophet, I got my goddamn good and I still got robbed. Man, that's a motherfucker. I'll never forget that day long as I live. Now, my grandfather said, in that way, no profit. And I'm trying to be the first motherfucker in line for little Willie to cut me. Because I don't want profit to get on my goddamn head no more. Profit could only cut a barber, a, a, a ball head. And that's something they tell me about Mr. Spears. It's a man, the only goddamn thing he can cut is a ball head. Man, that nigga can't cut nothing else. Let him. I bet he ain't the best cut in his own goddamn shop. Just like profit. Little Willie was the best cut. Had motherfuckers lined up for blocks. And Prophet, shit, you can go get right in there in his chair or you only know what you're going to get, a Kavalis. All Prophet could cut was a Kavalis. And I stopped fucking, now, nah, uh-uh, Prophet is not goddamn cutting me today. I don't want no goddamn ball here. And that's all he could cut. Boy, Prophet used to be so funny, I could see him there. He about 6'2", taller guy, had a little... Shanky beard, man, and probably be standing up there. You know how barbers are. All of them talk cash shit. That's what a barber shop is. They don't do nothing but talk cash shit. And you used to go to Prophet's barber shop, man, you'd be in there all day them old timers talking cash shit. And Lil Willie be in there rolling. Prophet wouldn't be making no goddamn money. He'd be doing all the goddamn talking. Lil Willie would be making all the goddamn money. Because if you wanted a cut by him, it was slim pickings. Because to get a cut at that time by Little Willie, he was one of the hottest motherfuckers in the city cutting heads. Understand that Little Willie, and they tell me he moved on off the Grand River, started doing zippers and all kind of shit. But he started right there at Prophet's Barbershop cutting heads and went on to be famous, they tell me. They say for a minute there, Little Willie was the hair man. They say them hair shows they talk about on the BMF show, they say Little Willie was right there in the thick of it. They say them hair shows they talk about on the BMF series over there on Stars, they say this barber by Little Willie. He used to be putting the zipper in at that time. And they say he was one hot goddamn item on the hair circuit, the beauty salon circuit. They said Little Willie always motherfucker had to wait a year to get in to get a cut by him or get a zipper done. Understand that? So I remember when a motherfucker started from the beginning. Prophet's Barber's Shop. One of the funnest place you would go into. In the treat of the day, as soon as I go into Prophet's Barber's Shop, I would get a Coke and some peanuts. If you were sitting in Bar Prophet's Barber's Shop, and you ain't had no goddamn Coke and peanuts, you wasn't shit. In that day, the thing was Coca-Cola and peanuts. You had to get you a Coca-Cola and a pack of peanuts, and for me, a cut by Lil Willie. Understand, cause profit, you walking out that motherfucker like you going to the military. Under, if profit get on your shit, you, got, you going to the military, cause that's what you're gonna look like. And I love to always come back and tell you all a lighthearted story. How a motherfucker be so busy minding another motherfucking business, he can't even goddamn cut his. 
See, when you busy minding somebody else goddamn business, your business is going left unattended. So he busy minding my motherfucking business telling me I talk too much, but I talk for a living. He cut heads for a living, and he can't even goddamn cut heads for a living. Go into the nigga's barbershop on 8 Mile and see what he doing. Cutting Cavalluses early in the morning. Because when it's time to fade a nigga up and do all that, I bet he ain't the chair a nigga go get in. I bet y'all cash money when a nigga want to seriously get faded. He don't go get in Mr. Spears' chairs. I bet it's another barber at the shop that's knocking them dead. Not him. Understand, he can't talk, nor can he cut. So he think he the master of all trades, and he is the master of none. The motherfucker can't cut his, can't talk, can't tell us. Talk to him. Listen how the little monkey talk. Don't he look like a little motherfucking monkey sitting up there with one little patch? He got one goddamn little string of hair. He ain't got no guy. He got one goddamn little string of hair twisted up here. And looking like a goddamn monkey. If I put a picture of a monkey up and I put a picture of him up, you wouldn't know which is which. Which is the monkey and which is Mr. Spears. For real. Y'all think I'm bullshitting. See, remember this, and let me tell y'all this, kids. Don't y'all ever forget this. Mr. Spears is this kind of motherfucker. He's a little bitty monkey-looking motherfucker. He's a little bit ugly motherfucker. And to make himself feel good and to try to get any attention, he has to try to down you to make himself feel better. So I'm giving you kids a story today for you all. Most people who have no self-confidence themselves have to try to put you down. And it's fucked up. When the only, time, the only thing that can make a nigga feel good is belittling you. Really? Is that a man of God? Really? Who goes around belittling people to make his own little monkey ass feel good? And I want you little kids to know that. A nigga walk in the house, shot in a motherfucker. He's sitting down looking like a little monkey. You ugly the motherfucker, hey, but I love you. That's a monkey. He looked just like a monkey. That's the shit a monkey do. A real clown who wants to be seen. See, the nigga do that to get some attention because he wants everybody in the room to see him because they ain't paying him no attention. I done told y'all he out in the goddamn garage flicking the remote control while everybody else is in the house drinking, laughing, and living it up. The little monkey out there in the goddamn garage with one little goddamn strand of hair. I mean, the rest of the shit is gone, nigga. Cut that little one hair off, too. Because I don't know what the fuck that's going to do for you. Would you please explain to the world, Mr. Spears, since you want to be seen and you want everybody to hear you, let's make your monkey ass the center of attention. You sissy sucker punk motherfucker. You sissy sucker punk motherfucker. Let's make you the center of attention. Now explain to all of us, you monkey motherfucker, why you got one goddamn strand of hair and ain't shit else up there but like a Superman twist. That's all this motherfucker got. So tell us why he only got this goddamn Superman twist and everything else is bald. Does he think he's Superman? Clark Kent? Because the hair is gray and his little monkey looking motherfucker. And obviously, he think he can fly. Understand what a motherfucker like Mr. Spears really is. A piece of shit. He has to down other people to make himself feel good. There's nothing else he can do but to down somebody else to make himself feel good. So he's very insufficient. And as we say, we know he got a pencil dick because you can look at that little bitty motherfucking monkey and see he ain't got no dick. So he need to carry his little monkey ass somewhere 
and go back to barber school and learn how to cut heads. Because you can't fucking cut, they tell me. You the worst fucking cut in the shop. Anytime a nigga walk in your shop and want to get a cut, you available. So let me give y'all all out there some barbershop etiquette. Because me and Al's barbershop, Al's barbershop, by the way, so you will all know, I gave that to Al. I gave it to him. Understand that I helped him build a monster barbershop. For all of you who remember Al Barbershop, it would make Mr. Spears Barbershop look like a shithole. We had so many goddamn customers, we ain't had no fucking where to park. So I done ran a barbershop too. Al's place. I even talk about Al's place. 